Hello everybody, welcome to another list video on the Playing Board Games channel for Arkham Horror the Card Game. If you don't know who we are, uh, we're I'm Justin, I'm joined by Bryn and Travis, and we make lists about Arkham Horror the Card Game for your amusement. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about our favorite cards from each of the uh, Investigator starter decks, so that includes Nathaniel Cho, Harvey Walters, Winifred Habamuck, Jacqueline Fine, and Stella Clark, I believe is her last name. Uh... And uh, we're going to, uh, in the future, do our least favorite cards as well. But for right now, let's talk about what our favorite cards are in each of the decks and why they are our favorites, uh, why they excite us so, and why they just make us happy to see them when we draw them or dream about drawing them. Starting with Bryn for the Nathaniel Cho deck. Please, no hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> so... As someone who has played mostly green cards since the beginning of the game, I take some joy in the in it when other colors <laughs> get cards that are so absurdly useless that you would no, you would never want to play them. They're just like, what am I doing with this? I could play emergency cash, or I could play emergency cash that requires me to first defeat three enemies by more than they have, and then I get my emergency cash. Mm -hmm. You sound a little bit bitter, Brent. Uh, no, just like a little bit. Okay. Uh, I am. I was. I was reading. Uh, reading somebody's review on it, and there are a couple of neat corner cases for this card. Now, the first of which is like Will Yorick. Obviously, easy for him to get back. Um, he's still got to trigger it somehow, though. So that's kind of a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, Tommy Muldoon's weakness requires him to shuffle a card with health on it. Relentless had like, like it, it's a. It has damage you don't, on it. Yeah, like you take it puts damage on it, so like you can use that as like a free out. And the last one is Mark Harrigan, whose ability triggers whenever damage is placed on a card you control. And this is a card you control that can theoretically have damage placed on it. <gasps> it's still like pretty not good. <laughs> <gasps> but those are like those are the, <laughs> the those are some pretty reasonable cases that I saw people making for this card. Travis but, is uh, now like Yeah. <laughs> It's official. This card's great. <laughs> I'll try it. Like, worst case scenario is I take it out for my Ace of Swords. Mm -hmm. You know? What, where does, what is the one Solemn Vow? What does that do? Is it... Solemn Vow is like the one that lets people take damage from their cards and put it onto yours. Hmm. The Myriad one that you play in Tommy all the time, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just trying to, if it's what the wording was. I think it has to be placed on, like, a card that can take it though yeah probably yeah but it just is a card you control so maybe we could try to convince the faq to change <laughs> that this works like yeah. like what's it gonna do if what like what <laughs> chaos is it gonna cause if you can put damage from solemn vow on relentless like well you have to run so many it, you know it, it should I'll email them. They'll not respond to me because they never do because I send a million Charlie Kane emails every week. But they might respond to that one. They have all 15 of my domains blacklisted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty easy. All of them have Charlie Kane in it. So, uh, My favorite card from the Investigator deck is 1-2 uh, Punch. And I, I had a hard time with this one because like Nathaniel Cho, as, as we were getting this together, Bryn said that like his deck is so built around Nathaniel Cho. Like, the um, boxing gloves are sick, but like really they're not great with other people unless you also have a bandolier to use an actual weapon to fight with. Um, but with Nathaniel Cho, the synergy in his deck is incredible. And But I think 1-2 Punch has just so much exciting stuff going on for it that I really dig it. It represents uh, five damage in one card, uh, and two of that damage is uh, Tesla. So you could if you wanted to, to make sure you've dealt the damage, put like your vicious blows onto the first fight action. And you don't even need to fight the same enemy again. You could fight something else at your location with the plus three and then deal three damage for that attack. But like this card is such an exciting boss killer. And anytime you see a card with like more than three symbols on it, especially when they're all the same, yeah. like that's just awesome. You're like, this has four punch symbols on it. Why would I commit this oh, when baby. I could just play with it? <laughs> but like, because uh, yeah. 
Because your crystallizer senses are, trink are tingling. Oh, baby. We gotta do uh, that. We gotta get Bryn. This decision is a designer, too, right? Where you're just like, you look at a card like this, and you're like, yeah, just put as many as physically fit on the card, because if no one's gonna commit this to a test ever. Yeah, like, just do it. <laughs> Uh, I think yeah. the car, I, I've played with it uh, with the and Nathan and our Nathaniel Cho Ursula run. And Nathaniel Cho is really fun and his card advantage and uh, damage output is insane. I just wish he wasn't so um, limited to just him, right? Like the cards that are really good in him are kind of just only good in him. But one, two punches just has so much fun, exciting stuff going for it that I really dig it. Uh, I don't think we've aired it yet, but I did do, like, the spirit archetype, and I think that there's a couple of investigators who can play it, like, it might not be their best build, but it's, like, definitely functional and, like, cool. Sick. Uh, yeah, we haven't done that one yet, but I'm, I'm oh. excited. I'm excited for that one. I'll probably do that one next, then, when we visit uh, Guardians in four weeks. <laughs> in a month. Yep. Uh, Travis, what's yours? Uh, this is stand together. This one's super boring, but I like it when blue characters get resources. This gives me resources and one of your teammates' resources too, and it's good. Sick. Don't think Nailed we, it. Don't need to say anything else. <laughs> Should we move on to Harvey Walters? Yeah. Let's do it. Bryn, what's your number one? <laughs> so I've got Farsight. So this one is as a lightning bolt effect during your turn. If you have eight or more cards in your hand, you can exhaust Farsight to play an event from your hand, paying its cost. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just really cool. It is cool. Uh, I have no idea what the hell I would ever do with it, because it's a level four yellow card. <laughs> um, when we get once again, once we get but, to the hand size archetype, this card gets yeah. featured. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this card's just super cool. Uh, you may or may not know one of my favorite cards in the game is the Crystallizer of Dreams, and attempting to abuse that card. This seems like something that could do that. Heck yeah! Heck yeah! Is that that video is gonna have something for both of you? Farsight for Brynn and Minty Fan for Justin. I love Minty Fan. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Farsight was my number two favorite. I think the card's really sick, and it gets your uh, any card that kind of gets your the, the the wheels in my brain turning of what I can do with it. And I just think the uh, number of it, it just gives you so much advantage. It's gonna be great. I'm actually surprised you didn't pick uh, Witten Green, Brynn. Yeah, Witten is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, she but was this on card my card is cooler. Okay. Because it synergizes with the Crystallizer. That's the important part. Uh, my, my favorite card is the Miskatonic Ar uh, Archaeology Funding. Uh, I think this is like what Charisma should be, right? Like, Charisma has obviously been so long in the game and that it's such a good upgrade that even today, like, going for a Charisma is a good choice to do. I like the flavor for this one more. I also like the, um, the limit, which really isn't a thing, but it could like B, like the, the forced effect, it could be a little bit of a downside, but I, I really like it and I think it works really well. I like that the ally slots are only for Miskatonic. I do have a bone to pick because once again, I feel like yellow is kind of can just do everything. So like, why not just give them like right now this really fun, cool, unique, super charisma, right? Um, yeah. I would really like to see this expanded for other colors. Yeah, like definitely. maybe uh, blue gets it for police assets and like green gets it for criminals, mm -hmm. um, something like that. I don't know about yeah. purple. Red? Purple could get oh, like man. so red or some garbage. Should get uh, red should get like a animal beast whisperer one. Yeah, where, like you're not you're no longer allowed to include human allies. That would actually in your deck, sick. but you can have you have like extra slots that can hold your creature allies. Yeah, that'd be super. That'd be, sick. I'd actually be a huge fan of that. No, that would be real cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah, but why wouldn't yellow be the first color to get their own yeah. charisma? Yeah, yeah exactly. Why, why wouldn't it? And that's that's my problem with yellow. I love playing yellow. It's my second favorite class to play, but they just do taste. too much. Travis, what's yours? I picked Arcane Enlightenment. Uh, this card is a hand-sized card to exactly nobody's surprise. It also supports tomes, but who cares? Um, <laughs> downsides to this card are that it competes with... Uh, Dream Enhancing Serum, which is tough. But uh, upsides to this card are Tome Synergy, which, like, I know I just said, who cares about it, but it's actually relevant. Um, also, just gives you a flat one hand size, which is pretty nice, especially if you're playing a more toolboxy deck. Also, is Guts, and I like Guts. Mm -hmm. If you have watched literally any of our deck building videos, Guts is good, and this card is Guts. 
Man, it's oh, been so man. crazy that we haven't had to say the guts explanation. Yeah, it, it's been a couple weeks yeah. actually. Yeah, it's been a hot minute. Uh, yeah. Travis, you cards. should play a Luke Robinson deck where you're playing Arcane Enlightenments and uh, the Book of Shadows, so that mm-hmm. they can each hold each other. <laughs> I thought you were gonna go into some kind no of real reason. thing where you're like the yeah. hand five second yeah. Luke likes events, but no, it's just stupid. Yeah. <laughs> they, can, they can hold each other. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah you get to you just get you get to have Atoma Shadows for free, and you get to have an extra hand hand size Boom. slot for free. Win win. Justin, what's the next deck, please? Let's move on to Winifred. <laughs> uh, starting with I'm new conversation. Oh man. Okay. So my my favorite card out of this deck is uh, like actually most of them, but uh, if I really had to pick, it would probably be Chuck Fergus, and not just because of his sweet beard. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm currently uh, in a campaign. I'm playing with my family, playing a Chuck Fergus Winifred deck, mm-hmm. and you just get to peep. Like, the game's like, you only have three actions, and you're like, man, but, like, what if... What if I got to take another one to fight this guy because this card says fight on it? And they're like, fine, but you gotta pay for it, and you're like, well, what if I what if I didn't, though? And the game's like, well, that well that sucks. I guess you can't have your plus two then, and you're like, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah you win. You win this yeah. round. You, you win this round, but next time, if the plus two is better, I'll, I'll have that instead. Yeah. <laughs> I think Chuck Fergus is sweet. I love the deck we He's built really around cool. him in our deck building series and yeah. he's probably my number two until i uh read what all the cards in this pack did and then i got oh man one. the cards in this pack are so cool yeah they're pretty this, neat. Is the, this is the best deck in my opinion and not just because i'm biased only partly because i'm biased that's fair i don't know what i would say I the, best the best deck for supporting its color but for supporting a specific archetype is not the best and also personally it's not the best because it is green and i do not like green <laughs> that's fair that's fair i love yeah. it because like i like to imagine like this like travis at, a, at the debate is like giving all these good points he's like and also green is poo poo thank you <laughs> green is bad i do not like green you also should not like green yeah <laughs> Uh, my number one is copycat. Uh, so my favorite for this one rather is copycat. Uh, I love the I love skills. That should be no surprise to people who have been on our chan- uh, channel quite a bit. Uh, and I just think that this is a really neat way of uh, something that I want to see more in the game, but I understand why they don't do too much of it. They have to limit the design space in each cycle uh, is cards that care about multiplayer because some people play the game true solo and it kind of sucks that there's cards that are just useless in true solo. Uh, for those people, not for me, I don't care. Just give me cards that I can play with Travis and Bryn and use their stuff. I think that's really fun and exciting. Um, and this is like such a neat thing that also can open up a few little weird broken tricks that this card could definitely eventually one day uh, potentially cause some chaos in the rules, which I think would be really fun and exciting and kind of is uh, engaging to me. So that's... Yeah, yeah cool. this card's really cool if you're playing with a yellow character because they empty their deck pretty quickly usually yep. and you can just use copycat to copy one of their skills put it on the bottom of their deck and then they have to draw that card now here's or what you do through. every time <laughs> here's what you do every depending time. on how you're like, you i'm gonna that. copycat your unexpected courage and they're like really i have all yeah. this other stuff he's like no i just nah. want an unexpected courage <laughs> yeah sure you don't want a deduction level two <laughs> no just no. unexpected courage yeah uh Travis, what's your favorite from the Winifred deck? Uh, again, I don't like green cards, so I simply pick the best green card that I can play in decks that play green as a secondary <laughs> color, and I believe it's Slip Away. Uh, I think this card is actually just insane. Like, so you add your book to your foot for the skill test, mm-hmm. and if you succeed by one or more, so like, you know, that's going to be like 90% of the time you're succeeding a skill test when you're testing 8 to whatever they have. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. And the is Nolly, which is fair. But it doesn't ready during the next upkeep phase. And if you succeed by 3 or more, you get it back to your hand at the end of the turn. That's that's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Like, that just ties up like a Dark Young for 2 turns. And then if somehow it's still relevant, 
like you just do it again. Yeah, I <laughs> I like level zero slip away. I think it's a great starting card for a majority of green decks. Like a, like, and then this one is just even better, and like it does so much for in one little card. Yeah. I think this card is like actually just nutty. It's also pretty good in Rita for what that's worth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you play it every other turn, you can just pick one non-elite enemy and they don't get to play the game anymore. Yeah, yeah. pretty sick. All right, let's move on to Jacqueline Fine. Brent. Purple. Purple. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> just tell us what your card is. <laughs> so I got the robe of endless, the robes of endless night. Uh, you get to make your spells cost one less when you play them, which is pretty real. Like, purple is often kind of hurting for economy uh, mm -hmm. and wants to devote a sizable portion of the deck towards that. It also soaks two regular damage, which, again, is something that purple is not great at. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, like, the actual reason is here is because, like, look at that card artwork. Yeah, it's sick. This card is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Like not only not only is it like something that is pretty good, but also looks uh, looks pretty well as being good. Heck you know? yeah! I think this is also the first purple card that takes a body slot, which is some. I always love to see body slot cards. I think it's incredibly underutilized. Yeah, yeah. No, I think you're right. Hard agree. Yeah, card's sick. But yeah, no, just fantastic card. Uh, mine is Parallel of Fates. Uh, a big part of this is because uh, a lot of the cards in this pack were a little bit like, oh, look, this is just shriveling but different. This is just uh, Rite of Seeking but different in a way. Uh, as, as Mystic is. Like, 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 that's not really a knock. Like, Mystic, I love playing Mystics, but they're kind of just like, their basic building block stuff is pretty boring compared to other, play, uh, other colors. Um, but when you get into these weird kind of niche effects is where Mystics get uh, a little bit exciting. Like Premonition, right? Like, yeah, I love Premonition. I love Seal of the, the uh, Elder or Seventh Sign, whatever the card is. Or, the, who doesn't love Seal of the Elder Sign or Seal of the Seventh Seal Sign? Of the Seal. Seal. Seal's great. Seals are fantastic. Yeah, exactly. Like, like Purple has so Seals many exciting like things uh, <laughs> at its high experience or its niche, but like this pack doesn't really yes. have those because yeah. they had to devote so much to their spells, right? Um, uh, this one is a little bit neat where you get to look at the top four cards in the counter deck and you can, uh, if you reveal a bad shit, you have to shuffle them, but otherwise you can return them to the top in any order. It's kind of like a first watch in purple, a way to mitigate chaos in the deck. And, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, we're going to be doing a run soon through the Dream Eaters where I get to play Grandma Gloria. Uh, and I'm very excited for protecting and loving my two grandchildren and keeping them safe no justin you're supposed to pretend like you'd already played it and we're happy with it <laughs> <laughs> uh travis what's your number one <clears throat> uh this is arcane studies so like justin there's some cool cards in this pack burn picked robes of endless night which is on my short list i think parallel fates is pretty cool i picked arcane studies because i'm happy to see these cards their third iterations finally be not trash in my opinion. <laughs> um the ones that come to the course that I think are just absolute garbage. I'm like basically unplayable, especially with the current card pool. Uh, the level two versions are like obviously better, but outside of some uh, well prepared synergies, I still think that they are like kind of trash. Mm -hmm. But these level four ones are like I think we only have two of them right now. We have Arcane Studies and then the blue one, Physical Training, and then the Thal Show Deck. But they are like mm, they're the real deal, man. Yeah, this so it's is... like a free guts or perception or a combination of those two every turn, and then you can also still pay the resources for it. So, yeah, yeah, and it also just does arcane studies. Yeah, like these these cards are actually like four experience is a big cost to pay, but like it's actually worth it. Yeah, these cards are kind of insane. Definitely, I'm excited to play with them. I think like uh, I think they'll be. Uh... I haven't played with, with that one yet because there's exciting things to also spend your experience on. But I think when there's a deck that I'm going to build that wants it, I'm very excited to see how it plays because it reads so nice. It's just mm -hmm. You could play this in a Diana Stanley deck with uh, Shaving Man. Well prepared. And get an extra Guts or Perception for free every turn. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna just say I think this is cool, but I think your arcane tome and book of shadows holding each other is a better idea still. 
<laughs> I think that's an I'm amazing not idea. I don't I understand why you're not that's a better idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's move on to the final deck, the Stella deck in Survivor, what everyone's favorite card is, starting with Bryn. Oh my god, lucky three, I love this card. Key level three. Yeah, you can just play this one when anybody fails, and you draw a card, and it, you don't have to have a resource to pay for it. Like, If you have upgraded your luckies to lucky two, and you have access to lucky three, you better be using them as a placeholder until you have enough XP to pay for lucky three. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah 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 uh, definitely or maybe somebody else is using the lucky three or uh possibly also third option you're playing like parallel skids and you're just playing all six luckies <laughs> you're just so. the, literally the luckiest man yeah. alive yeah um they're like i'll fail a test but i will actually get plus uh seven <laughs> to this and play one yeah. copy each kind of lucky <laughs> I remember when Travis, we were meeting up one morning, one day to do the recording because we record once a week. And Travis and I were just in the Discord and he was like, hey, did you see the new Lucky? And I was like, what do you mean new Lucky? Like, I was like, level two Lucky is already great. Like, what are they going to do? And you're like, yeah, there's a level three Lucky. And then I looked at it and I was Which like, you know, oh my God. It's it's like you're paying one more XP, but it's well worth it. Like it's it costs one so less, worth it. that's often worth an XP on its own. Yeah. yeah. You get Honestly, extra windows jump. you can play it in, and it gives you plus one more, like an additional plus one skill value. Mm -hmm. Like each yeah, one like of these things might be zero worth XP To three XP is probably more worth it than the jump from zero to two. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like you can use the level twos as placeholders, as anyone who knows, who, or who has played, uh, played purple knows. Uh, yeah. But, uh, so yeah, like this one's just so much better. Yeah, just its ability to now keep that one resource, as you can see on Travis's card. Like, you don't even now need to keep it for Lucky. You can use it on other things and then use Lucky during your turn or for someone else. It's great. Uh, mm -hmm. My favorite card is uh, Deja Vu from this set, <clears throat> mostly because it was so exciting as a, the, the PBG Survivor player of um, cards that were above three experience. For a long time, survivor cards were three experience. And I think for a good chunk of time, that was really cute and actually good for the design space of red. But I think they waited just a bit too long and it was nice to see them come in. Uh, this is Deja Vu and Quick Learner for this one. Uh, Quick Learner is sick. It's very powerful, but it doesn't entice me or excite me the way that Deja Vu does. The exile me mechanic uh, hasn't really, or archetype hasn't really been explored because the exploration in that was just, you get only level three cards, so use your experience on the cards you get rid of your deck. That was all that existed to interact with exile before. So now with Deja Vu, uh, you actually just can buy this permanent card and now you can use your uh, Deja Vu to help you rebuy your exiled cards. And I think that's just a really cool area to actually see explore. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited for an exiled deck that I can play because it's now a whole new archetype that actually interests me more than just Dark uh, Dark Horse in Survivor. And I've been, I love yeah. Dark Horse, but I also like playing new things in this game. And Deja Vu is going to allow me to do that, which I'm really excited for. I actually hope that they, uh, they still limit themselves a little bit with the high experience options in red. And they reserve them for like very high impact permanents or like or chain cards. Cells. Yeah, like cards that people like just cards that people get excited about. Yes, yeah. I, I agree. I don't think like now every pack should have like every cycle should have a level four or five, but exactly what you're saying. Yeah, Travis. but if they do like one every other cycle, I think that's a nice sweet spot for them. Yeah. Especially in permanents, because like um Red is kind of like they can do the some more weird build around stuff that like you won't see in other colors, right? Like quick, quick learner, right? Like it's, yeah. I think it'll be really beneficial to see that more in the future. No, I like it a lot. Anyway, my favorite card from this deck is um, this is Ward of Protection, <laughs> but red. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so that's why it's here. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't exile itself, which is pretty sick. Is the level zero version? They just have to pass the brain three test, and like, why wouldn't you be able to do that? 
Like you should actually though, like you should be applying the tests. If you're pl not playing green, you should be applying to pass brain tests anyway. Brain three is pretty reasonable, and like sometimes you're gonna get screwed on, but like, like just you should play this card. It's good. It's water protection, but red. <laughs> and then you I can like you can hold the place for when you buy the upgraded versions. Then you use deja vu to buy them back, and then it's great. Yep, killer for everything. That's uh, that's it. Sick. That is it. Uh, so in the future, we're gonna do a video of also of our least favorite cards from each investigator deck, because sometimes we love being positive for this game, but sometimes it's really nice to be negative too. Um, other than that, keep your suggestions for list videos coming. Uh, we'll see you guys next Thursday for another list video. Uh, have a good one, and as always, GGs.